Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the screencast of lecture number 5, Tissue Repair. So the intended learning outcome of this lecture is the students will be able to define regeneration, renewal and repair and explain the mechanism involved in tissue repair and they can able to explain the clinical outcome of primary and secondary intention of healing and analyze the various factor influence wound healing and their clinical importance. In the end they can able to explain the pathological aspect of wound healing. So let us go into the lecture and so far you must be knowing if there is an injury for example there is a cell death the cells are all there and this has to be removed by the inflammation then we have inflammatory cells neutrophil they will come and remove this area after that the healing starts after that the healing starts those healing may be of two types whether it could be of regeneration or it could be of repair okay so regeneration means the lost tissue the lost tissue is completely gained the lost tissue is completely replaced by the same tissue okay so for example in some animals if the animals hand is cut then the complete hand again grows back the complete hand again grows back that is regeneration but in human being we don't have such capacity but except in few organs except in few organs but for example the liver is damaged and the liver is damaged but the liver when they it is growing it will not come back like a original liver instead of it grows this existing liver tissue grows in size increase their size by increasing the number of the by increasing the number of the cells there so it is not exactly the regeneration but it is compensatory it is compensatory it is called compensatory hyperplasia compensatory hyperplasia okay now you know the skin the skin is has epidermis that epidermis is made up of cell layers that epithelium is called as that epithelium is called as what is that epithelium the epithelium is called as keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium if it gets for if there is damage this is epidermis this is epidermis and the down we have blood vessels and connective tissues we have blood vessels and connective tissues and we have some cells called fibroblasts that produce collagen that produce collagen okay this is the connective tissue area this is called dermis this is called dermis if there is damage to this skin and it is only involving the epithelium only involving the epidermis then after a period of time the whole skin comes back the whole epithelium comes back and without any evidence of injury without any evidence of injury 
why because only the epithelium is damaged because the epithelium can be regenerated back so this is called regeneration this is this both the things is called regeneration but in the liver what is happening is compensatory hyperplasia but if the injury is went deeper if the injury went deeper if the injury went deeper then it is replaced by it is replaced by a scar tissue it is replaced by a scar tissue scar tissue is nothing but it is a so scar tissue is nothing but it is a collagen it is a collagen understand so if the cell has capacity to regenerate and the injury is superficial then they will go for regeneration they will go for regeneration if the cell has not capacity to regenerate and injury is deep then they will go for scar formation then they will go for scar formation okay so once again i tell if the injury is involving only the epithelium involving only the epithelium of the skin this is the epithelial cells only involving the epithelium of the skin then it goes for re generation if the injury involves deeper and it will go for scar formation if the extent of injury is more if the extent of injury is more extent of injury is more they produce more collagen they produce more collagen they produce more collagen it will cause fibrosis more collagen is called fibrosis that will result contraction because more collagen will has a capacity to contract so it will produce contractures it will produce contractures so now you can understand the regeneration scar and fibrosis which results in contraction now this is happens in the superficial wound but for example this liver is infected with hum hepatitis virus this hepatitis virus produce chronic inflammation chronic inflammation this macrophage and lymphocytes are activated okay so when the macrophage is activated this macrophage secretes il12 that will activate t lymphocytes that will activate t lymphocyte and t lymphocyte will produce interferon gamma and then they will activate the macrophage and this whole cycle continues meanwhile this macrophage release growth factors and this growth factor stimulate fibroblast and they also stimulate blood vessel and they make fibroblast to divide more and they produce more collagen and blood vessels will also grow blood vessels also grow that is called angiogenesis so the macrophage produce growth factor that will act on the fibroblast to produce more collagen so in chronic inflammation we have macrophage cells that stimulate chronic inflammation meanwhile they also produce inflammatory injury inflammation causing 
tissue injury and they also produce growth factor and initiate the healing that's why in chronic inflammation tissue injury healing happens simultaneously and they will end up with fibrosis they will end up with fibrosis so i hope you all understand if any chronic inflammation is stimulated because in chronic inflammation the cells involved are macrophages that will also induce inflammation as well as that also induce healing by producing growth factor so the growth factor will keep on stimulating the fibroblast and they will result in fibrosis that will result in fibrosis okay so that's what happens in the chronic inflammation okay now in acute inflammation for example the bacteria comes and the neutrophil is stimulated and after the neutrophil damaging the bacteria destroying the bacteria and they also die and they form pus after the pus formation the neutrophils are replaced by macrophage neutrophils are replaced by macrophage and this macrophage will stimulate growth factors this growth factor will act on fibroblast and they will produce increase the fibroblast proliferate and that will cause increased production of collagen and this growth factor act on blood vessels and new blood vessels are formed then that tissue is healed so the cell involved in healing is macrophage the cell involved in healing is macrophage for example if the person okay got some knife cut immediately what happens the blood vessel in the dermis is ruptured then automatically they bleed after that they will clot they will clot so the clotting will induce inflammation induce inflammation and neutrophils comes and they remove the clot after that macrophage comes and they produce growth factor the growth factor causes blood vessels to grow and fibroblast to proliferate and they produce collagen and and they produce collagen so now they produce collagen and the collagen completely replace the tissue so the scar is formed so the clot induce inflammation and the neutrophil is replaced by macrophage and that results in fibrogenesis and angiogenesis and in naked eye this two looks like pink in color and that is called granulation tissue that is called granulation tissue okay so when there is single incision of cut small incision cut straight to straight incision cut that produce less scar formation so that is called primary intention of healing primary intention of healing if they remove larger area larger area that produce large clot that produce massive more inflammation more macrophage more growth factor more fibrogenesis more collagen production that ends up with more scar formation more fibrosis and produce contracture so when there is excision they produce contracture and that is secondary healing secondary healing so 
whenever there is a healing is started we have to look for on the fifth day or seventh day for granulation tissue if the granulation tissue is pink it is good healing so with this basic we'll go into the handout so injury to cells or tissues sets a series of events to control the damage that is inflammation then initiate the healing process then initiate the healing process so healing process is of regeneration and repair regeneration means complete restoration of lost or damaged tissue repair means original structure is will not be restored but it causes some structural alteration causes structural alteration so regeneration refers to proliferation of cells and tissues to replace the lost structure in some animals if a limb is removed example in amphibian the limb grows back whereas in human being we have only compensatory growth we have only compensatory growth that happens in the liver so what is renewal in renewal normally the cell is replaced once the cell dies because of the cell having high proliferative high division capacity example epithelia of the skin gastrointestinal tract remember difference between renewal and regeneration is regeneration happens after injury renewal happens at a normal level because when the cell attains certain time they will die and new cell will come so this is a normal process but this new cell will come if the stem cells are there if the stem cells are destroyed then the regeneration is stopped so repair is a combination of regeneration and scar formation scar formation means deposition of collagen the tissue going for regeneration or scarring depends on the ability of the tissue to regenerate and the extent of injury so superficial skin wound heals through regeneration of the superficial epithelium so if the extracellular matrix framework is damaged then it forms scar formation extracellular matrix is nothing but connective tissue if connective tissue is damaged then it end up with scar formation so chronic inflammation will stimulate scar formation because of local production of growth factors and they will promote fibroblast proliferation and more collagen synthesis and they end up with fibrosis they end up with fibrosis so this is superficial injury you can see it heals by regeneration without any sign of injury so this is scar formation so it is due to the injury is deep it went below the superficial epithelium and that's why the extracellular matrix is damaged so it ends up with scar formation here the injury is little bit more deeper it produce more collagen and it results in contracture so this is a severe injury caused due to the burn so more collagen is produced that is called fibrosis and that results in contracture so that's why the limb is contracted so in the liver there is hepatitis virus if it comes it produces inflammation then chronic inflammation results then they will produce fibrosis and the fibrotic liver is called cirrhotic liver the liver is completely become fibrotic so there are three types of cells in our body there are certain cells that are continuously dividing cells if the tissue contains continuously dividing cells they are called labile tissue and example epithelium of the urinary bladder epithelium of the gat skin oral mucosa there are some cells they don't divide normally uh, they are silent cells or cushion cells if the tissue contains cushion cells they are called stable tissue when the tissue is damaged then they will divide example cells of the liver pancreas and kidney there are some cells in our body they are completely non dividing cells per the, the tissues are called permanent tissues example neurons the cells of the nervous system so stem cells so zygote is the totipotent stem cells then after that they form the cells in the blastocyst they are pluripotent stem cells then they form cells 
which comes in the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm, then they become lineage committed stem cells. So, but these all stem cells are in the embryonic period, so they are called embryonic stem cells. They are called embryonic stem cells. So, what happens in this rat liver experiment? They removed the the M lobe of the and left lobe, median lobe and the left lobe is removed. The two lobes are removed here. What they see is regeneration, which means the remaining lobe gets larger in size, becomes larger in size. That right lobe and the caudate lobe is increasing, but not the median lobe and left lobe is coming back. So, this is called compensatory hyperplasia. So, if the lobes are removed, the remaining lobe increase in size. The remaining lobes increase in size. So, now coming to the extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix are basically connective tissue. So, if the cells are attached with the basement membrane and below the basement membrane, we have fibroblast and the blood vessels. This fibroblast produce collagen and other connective tissue substances. So, this is called extracellular matrix. So, the collagen is the most important extracellular matrix. It is mainly produced by the fibroblast and there are 27 different types of collagen. For the collagen synthesis, we need vitamin C. So, vitamin C deficiency, that is why uh, involved in inadequate wound healing. There are at least four types of collagen one should remember. So, collagen one is present in the bone. It is easy to remember bone has one. So, the collagen one is there in the bone. Cartilage, pronounce it as cartilage. So, the two is there. So, it is a two is collagen two is seen in the cartilage. So, three is present in all the tissue and it is easy to remember. Four means remember as floor and floor means basement basement membrane contains type 4 collagen. So, now coming to the steps involved in healing. So, the first step is inflammation. After inflammation, the inflammatory cells are replaced by the macrophage. Then the macrophage releases growth factor that will produce angiogenesis and then the migration and proliferation of fibroblast happens that is fibrogenesis. Then they produce collagen that is scar formation then they go for remodeling. So, in chronic inflammation that both happens the tissue repair, uh, tissue damage and the healing happens simultaneously that ends up with fibrosis. So, the angiogenesis and the migration and proliferation of fibroblast all together called as granulation tissue. It is normally pink in color, dark pink in color. So, there are two types of cutaneous wound repair, wound healing. So, that is primary union. This is seen in the surgical incision. So, which means when there is a straight to straight incision, the scar, the damage is very less, extent of injury is less, there is minimal clot formation and the minimal inflammation, minimal macrophage and minimal growth factor and minimal collagen production. So, that results in minimal scar formation. That is the characteristic feature of primary union of healing. In, in excisional wound, if, the, if they are removing a large area, that will produce more clot, more inflammation, more macrophage, more growth factor, more, fib more collagen that results in fibrosis and that results in contracture. So, contracture is the side effect of secondary union. Example, removal of teeth or removal of tumor or removal or burn injury. These are all the example of secondary union of uh, uh, secondary union or secondary intention of wound healing. So, remember this day is very important. When the person comes with for, comes to you for a, for a wound injury and you are dressing the wound after cleaning the wound giving antibiotic and you are dressing the wound that is you are putting the bandage. Once you put the bandage you will ask the patient to come after fifth day to see the wound. If the wound has very good healthy granulation tissue which means pink color granulation tissue then wound is healing in a correct way. So, that is healthy wound healing. So, remember the cells involved in wound healing is macrophage and chronic inflammation always produce fibrosis.
now coming to the factors which influence wound healing nutritional status is very important we all know vitamin c is essential for collagen synthesis blood supply is very important because blood supply only bring the nutrition if the person takes steroids that is a very potent anti inflammatory drug if there is no inflammation that will not produce proper healing so it inhibits healing so diabetic mellitus also inhibits inflammation that also involves in inhibits a wound healing so infection is always a big problem or persistence of foreign substances when there is open injury in accident or in trauma so we have to clean the wound properly because no foreign substance should be there so it will delay the wound healing now coming to the pathological aspect of wound healing if the wound healing is not proper if it is due to some uh, wound the scar formation is very soft then it can rupture or the wound will become very weak that is called wound dehiscence then wound ulceration can happen if there is more excessive collagen that is called hypertrophic scar or very much the scar is coming above the skin that is called keloid then the if there is very extent of injury like in the burns case that will produce severe fibrosis that will create wound contracture these are the pathological aspect of wound healing this ends the chapter number 5 tissue repair